Hobbywing have released a new 4-in-1 65 amp ESC for FPV called the X-Rotor FPV G2. This new ESC features an STM32 F4 processor, it features dynamic PWM and an overall improved design. Today what we're going to do is take a closer look at what this new ESC is all about, just walk you through some of its features and capabilities and then at the end I will share with you my thoughts. Now just to be clear, Hobbywing did reach out to me and asked if I'd be interested in taking a look at this ESC and I said yes because I am a big fan of Hobbywing products. In fact, I use Hobbywing ESCs and stacks in most of my FPV builds. Furthermore, even though they did send me this for free, I have not been paid to make this video and as always, my thoughts are my own. I also just want to add, I won't be flying this ESC in this video, we're just going to take a look over it first of all. I'll be putting it in a new build that I'll be sharing with you on the channel in the near future, but if you were wanting to see it in actual flight, I just wanted to be clear up front, we're not going to be doing that today. Anyway, let's get on with it and let's take a look at what's going on with this new model. Okay, so let's take a look at the ESC first of all. Now, it is very similar to some of the other 65 amp ESCs that we've had from Hobbywing. It is a 30 by 30 size size, as I've said, 65 amps capability, has the STM32 F4 SoC, which could run up to 120 megahertz. It has a 3-in-1 driver IC, it supports BL Heli 32, has a PWM range of 24 to 128 kilohertz, and that supports dynamic PWM as well, and it supports D-Shot and all of the usual I.O. for the motor control. Now, like all of the Hobbywing ESCs, it does have that same overall design where you have a connector option, but you also have the pads available to solder onto over here as well. We've then got our motor pads either side, and then if I spin it over to the other side, you can see you've still got those pads down there that you can solder directly to, and you've got your motor drivers down here as well. Now, it does have a 5 volt back on board as well, which is good for being able to power your flight controller, and as you've seen when you get it, it comes pre-wired with a capacitor fitted. That is, how big is that? Can't quite see. It is a 600 and 80, 680 microfarads, 3, 35 volt, and it has the wiring harness pre-connected as well to solder ends. If we just take a look at what else you get in the box with it, they do include a nice XT60, you get your manual which is always really good with Hobbywing products, and you get the little plug-in wiring harness which is designed to connect to the Hobbywing flight controllers, or you can repin that for use with your own flight controller as well. Now you'll see the ESC does come conformally coated. You can see that as I rotate it in the light, and that is the case on both sides. It does come with soft mounts as well. Now the nice thing about Hobbywing ESCs that I have found over the years having used a lot of them is that they are generally very very reliable. In fact I don't think I've ever burnt out a Hobbywing ESC. I do use their stacks on a number of builds. I think at least two of my builds over there have a full Hobbywing stack and there's at least another two aircraft with their 65 amp ESCs and they do tend to hold up quite well in a crash. You don't tend to see too many FETs blow. Don't get me wrong, you're always going to blow an ESC now and again, but overall they are fairly resilient. Now overall there isn't a huge amount to show other than that connector on the side here. What's nice as well alongside having that solder connector and the plug-in is the fact that they do show you the pinout for that down there as well. I'll put a bit of b-roll up getting in closer so you can see it, but you can also see the pin out there and they do show this in their book as well showing you what the standard pin out is but also what you can solder to directly. Power wise the ESC supports 3 to 6S input and as I've said it does have that 5 volt back on board at 0.6 amp. It isn't designed to power all of your FPV equipment, it's just designed to provide some power to your flight controller. There is also a 45 amp version of this ESC available as well but that one doesn't have the onboard back. As I mentioned there is a 45 amp version as well and that comes in at about 12 grams so if you are looking for the smaller one you can save a few grams on weight there too. Now 
Hobby Wing always include a nice little booklet with their ESCs, and this one is no different. You can see here that it has the pinout along the top here for the connections, and it also has it for both the 65 and 45 amp version as well. And it also has a nice overview of all of the connections. You have your usual battery, your S1 to 4 for your motors, your power input, your telemetry, and all of the usual connections. And again, the nice thing is they do include that harness if you want to use it as well for the plug, but also you can do that soldering direct as well. Now just to take a look at the ESC under the microscope, we've got our FETs and our capacitors on the top side of the board. So there are six FETs per motor, with there being 20 FETs on the top of the board, 10 each side, and another four underneath. You can see that it is conformally coated, although it is a little patchy here and there around the FETs in places, but overall it's going to give a good amount of protection to the main circuitry. Then if we go to this side here, we can see our connector, and we can see our pinout there showing, and you can see then we've got the FETs stacked, so there are banks of four and four with one on each corner, and then if we flip the board over, there's an additional FET in each corner, making up our numbers for 24 in total, or two per ESC. We then have our chipset underneath. We've got the Fortier FD62, I think that's 62, 6288Q. And then we've got our main SOC, which is the STM32 based one, which is 32F4, and that runs up to 120 megahertz. We've then, down here on the board, got our back. That's providing that 5 volt output. And overall, if we look around, the quality of the build looks really good. I'm seeing no issues with any soldering, no tombstoning on the components. It is exactly the kind of design that I would expect from the likes of Hobbywing. Overall, that is everything there is to say on it. It really does look to be another high quality ESC from Hobbywing. Genuinely, I do think they make some fantastic products and I've been an extensive user of them over the years on the channel and I wouldn't be happy to recommend them if they weren't. And certainly there's nothing here I see any concerning compared to any of the others and really is nice to see them continue to develop their products. Again, making some of the most reliable that I've used on the market. At the point of me making this video, I don't actually know the price. I would expect them to be in that usual $80 area, but please don't take that as fact because it's not confirmed at the point of me making this video. Really, in the end, it's another high quality ESC from Hobbywing. I'll be using this in a build in the very near future. So if you want to see that, please do make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. If you've got any questions, please do put them in the comment section and I will try and answer them as soon as I possibly can. Stay safe. I'll speak to you soon.